Did Sunshine Sachs and Meghan Markle really take Prince Harry and turn him from the golden goose into a giant turd? That's kind of what I think and the impression I got after reading through Tom Bauer's book, Revenge, about Harry and Meghan. And I really came to the conclusion that, wow, Sunshine Sachs, with the encouragement of Meghan Markle, really, really wrecked Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, and their brand. It really, they really kind of led them to ruin in many ways, because Harry and Meghan made the mistake of thinking they were celebrities, not royalty. And you know what? A lot of that, you know, kind of damage was inflicted by Harry, who just all of a sudden decided he was going to listen to every whim of his wife, who just didn't even know how royalty works. And I think it really led them to disaster and their continuing fall from grace. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Royal News Network. My name is Brittany. And on this channel, we talk about everything related to royals. So that's news, gossip, fashion, jewelry, television shows, movies, and history. We will do it all right here. So if you guys want to subscribe, that would be fantastic and like i said prince harry the golden goose and now the giant turd i mean that might sound kind of harsh but i really feel like that's truly what's happened to harry so if you haven't been i've watched royals very very closely for over 10 years now and harry was at one point the most popular royal within the british royal family via poll he was considered the most popular he was even more popular than the queen he was seen by the british public as this good old boy who you know fun lad who just enjoyed you know going out who didn't take things too seriously yet all also was very dutiful, very respectful, you know, very much had fun on his mind, but also was very, you know, obviously seemed family oriented as well. So the world very much got this very toned down, very, I guess, watered down version of Harry. And it seemed that it really, really worked. People really, really gravitated towards him. And you know, I was one of those people too. I thought Prince Harry was my favorite. I thought, oh my gosh, she's going to make such a better king than William. And boy, was I wrong. And you know what? It all kind of comes back to Meghan and Sunshine Sachs. And I really think Meghan Markle, with the encouragement and paying Sunshine Sachs, which had no clue how a monarchy works, and basically told Harry and Meghan to do the exactly wrong thing every single time, really just because they wanted to pad their own pockets, really has turned what could have made them hundreds of millions of dollars into basically an international laughing stock. Prince Harry right now is pretty much an international laughing stock. That's, that's being very serious right now. People don't like Harry. And we saw this very, very seriously when they were at the UN and Harry was giving the speech to an empty room. There was nobody in that room, but him and Megan pretty much and a couple other people and apparently somebody had to pull janitors in. Like there was nobody there. Nobody cared. And even he was made fun of by a Supreme Court Justice of the United States. Like, you know, and he's a punchline basically on late night shows. Like he is a joke. So how did this happen? How did he go from being the one everybody was having fun with to every to the one everybody was laughing at? And I don't think anybody really saw this coming. And I kind of started with Megan and their relationship. And Megan, I think, really kind of did a combination of things. I think she really was able to manipulate the wound of being the spare and Harry becoming more and more aware of that he was falling down the line of succession as William's children were born, that he was just not going to be as important in 10 to 20 years. And instead of, you know, understanding that and having kind of a mature reaction to it, figuring out how he could work within the family, how he could work within, you know, kind of the system. He's just wanted to throw it all away and start over. And to me, that just doesn't strike me as necessarily like the best exit strategy. And we saw this in Mexit as well. Mexit was kind of terribly orchestrated because they released the statement of their demands without actually securing that any of their demands were going to be met. And the monarchy looked at some of those and goes, no, we're not doing X, Y, Z. I don't care. And, you know, and Megan apparently was incensed that they didn't go along with her demands. And it's like, well, you didn't have, honey, you don't even have the bargaining chip you need because who holds the power here? The monarchy, the crown holds the power. So that's the queen, Charles and William. It's not you. And it's definitely not Harry. So Harry and Megan, when they first kind of got together, I think Megan again, exploited these things, weaknesses about Harry, and then really began to feed into his own paranoia. And they kind of, kind of coalesced around believing that Meghan was the next Diana. Yes, Meghan Markle, the next Diana Princess of Wales. After one, 
tour. She was the one everybody was gravitating towards. She was the one that everybody was obsessed with. And ergo, the brand Sussex, it's gonna explode. It's gonna go everywhere. And part of this too is that Harry fundamentally did not understand his mother, her flaws as a human being, whereas William does. William actually did kind of a truth finding tour to understand his mother better. And I think he's better for it because he understands her flaws and her weaknesses as a human being and how she kind of in a way, because she fed into the media, cause she would tell them where she was, she would pose for paparazzi pictures, various things like that really kind of led to her own death. And she also had a bit of this paranoia, which was inflamed by the BBC and just all these sorts of things. I think William went on this fact finding tour and really came away from it with a much more mature and respectful understanding of his mother. Whereas Harry thinks that Megan is his mother, basically, if that makes sense. He basically, you know, Megan is essentially his mother reincarnate. She, he is exact, she is exactly like him, even though pretty much everybody who met Megan, who knew Diana thought that Megan represented Diana's worst qualities, not her best ones. Megan really, and really latched onto this thing as her being the next Diana and thinking that she really had this huge, not only this huge platform, that, but that she was really, really going to become this like global influential brand figure after one tour. And Sunshine Sachs fueled this saying, oh, you will make a ton of money. You can, your brand is huge. Everybody loves you, yada, yada, yada. And they weren't doing this because necessarily it was the best for Harry and Meghan. They were saying these things because it was the best for Sunshine Sachs. And Sunshine Sachs apparently has never opened a history book or never actually spent some time trying to study monarchies across the world because they could have found out one simple thing very, very quickly. Individual members are not stars. Diana was, was an aberration. The vast majority of the members, nobody on their individual basis is a star. What makes them a star is their connection to the crown. And the closer you are to the crown, so the closer you are to being king or queen, closer up in the line of succession, the brighter the sun shines on you, or the star in this case. But obviously his son is a star. Anyway, so, you know, the queen obviously is closest to the sun. Charles is next, William after that. And then, although William's children are the next three, Harry, because he's the next working royal, is kind of the most at the forefront. So Harry is closer in the galaxy than he would be normally. And Meghan is just a sun, sorry, a moon revolving around her husband's planet, basically. Because again, the, the spouse, even though to a certain extent, for example, the women always take more of the focus because, you know, there's obviously a great first greater emphasis on fashion. They get to wear all the pretty jewelry. So people are all very interested in that. But at the end of the day, the true star is whoever is next in the line of succession. That is the bigger star. That will always be the bigger star. And even though, may, yes, Catherine's individual events may get more attention than Williams, she's very cognizant as well as the only reason anybody cares about her is because they care about her husband. And that's the, the, that's the thought process you should have as a royal. The one probably notable, notable exception to this, of course, is Grace Kelly, who was on her own a Hollywood star. She won an Oscar. She was in three Alfred Hitchcock films and she married when she was 26 or 27. I think she got engaged when she was 26, married when she was 27. Anyway, she made just 11 films, won an Oscar, and then went off to Monaco and never acted again. So she, on her basis, was a huge international star. She is still considered Hollywood royalty because she was just such an icon of her age to a certain extent, and she was an incredible beauty as well. Meghan Markle doesn't have that. Meghan Markle on her own was never a star. Nobody cared about Meghan Markle before she met Harry. In fact, Tom Bauer goes through extensively and explains all the time everything Megan did to try to make her star grow by paying Sunshine Sachs a, a bunch of money to make that happen and trying to create friendships with people she hoped could make that happen. Obviously, she did end up succeeding, but she wasn't a star on her own merit. She didn't become a star because she was a great actress, a great singer, a great philanthropist, all these sorts of things. She became a star because she got connected to somebody who was brighter than herself, and that was Harry. But of course, as Harry and Meghan have left the monarchy, because Sunshine Sachs kind of, I'm sure, fed their narcissism, their paranoia, and basically said, you know, you can make it without the shackles of the palace. You will explode. And they haven't exploded. They've imploded, basically. Harry and Meghan are just no longer, I feel like, draws. Again, we saw this in New York at the UN event. 
that was a mostly empty room. And the reason is nobody cares anymore. Why people cared was Harry's connection to the crown. Without that, the interest is slowly starting to drain because Harry himself, again, most royals are not people you would look at and go, oh, wow, they're a star. Like you just want to think that in the same way as a Hollywood actor or something who has great charisma, who's a great actor or actress, something like that, that makes the hat, they have that star quality. The Royals generally do not have a star quality. Their star is connected to the crown because the crown is a star. And so when Harry and Meghan left, because Meghan was never a star on her own and Harry star was always connected to the crown itself, it be immediately began to dim. And I don't think Sunshine Sachs was expecting that because I think they were expecting, again, this huge explosion of interest and intrigue and the Sussexes doing all these things. Because the other problem I don't think Sunshine Sachs anticipated is that Harry and Meghan by themselves don't necessarily have a ton of talent. We've seen this in terms of the podcast. Meghan's podcast was supposed to come out in the summer. It's August when this video will air. Um, I may have to adjust this if her podcast did eventually come out, but we have had no even word whether or not her podcast is gonna come out yet. And they signed the deal with Spotify. It'll be two years this December, two years. They've created one 35 minute podcast and two, two trailers and that's it. And that's insane. You can't be a star and not produce anything. Eventually, you know, Things will run out. I think a great example of this is Tori Spelling. So Tori Spelling is the daughter of Aaron Spelling. Aaron Spelling has passed away, but Aaron Spelling was huge for Beverly Hills 90210. He did Charlie's Angels. He did Seventh Heaven, like so, so many shows that had kind of a huge cultural impact. And he cast her on Beverly Hills 90210. And no offense to Tori Spelling, but she's not necessarily the most beautiful woman. And she also can't act. And so, yes, she had this kind of huge cultural impact moment with Beverly Hills 90210, but she was never really able to recapture that because her star power was bought for her rather than her having the skills to begin with. I think it's different if you take somebody like Angelina Jolie, whose father was an actor. I think her mom was briefly an actor as well. I can't remember. But you know, because there is a lot of nepotism in Hollywood, but you know, the people with the staying power either are people very easy to get along with and have a lot of charisma, or they're very good actors, or they're pretty good actors, or they, you know, take the right jobs. Because Angelina Jolie, she's won an Oscar. She's, you know, this huge cultural icon in many ways. And I mean, part of it is that she's insanely beautiful. Uh, like the bone structure, those lips, oh my gosh, she is just, oh, I can't even imagine being that pretty. <laughs> I can't even imagine. And, and and she did this before like plastic surgery became huge in Hollywood and everybody was doing these little these little like photo editing, you know, through kind of microscopic surgery things. I think a lot of them are doing now. So I think a lot of the Hollywood look has been kind of bought and paid for anymore. But Angelina was one of those few people where it was not and she was just an incredible actress. So she kind of was even though she had this great start and these great connections, she was able to keep going because she's a good actress. And Tori Spelling wasn't. And so eventually she had to rely on reality TV shows. And guess what? That's the same avenue Megan and Harry are going down. They're gonna do a reality TV show. So he went somehow from Buckingham Palace to a reality television show. So Megan really and Harry are kind of in this conundrum because I think Sunshine Sachs vastly overestimated Harry and Megan's star power. And they estimated, overestimated their talents, their abilities, all these different things. So they've lined up all these deals for them. But so far as I can figure, Harry and Megan can't deliver. At some point they will have to obviously produce something for Netflix, but their first show already got canceled, Pearl, their animated show. And I mean, I know Netflix decided to cancel a lot of their animated shows, so that's not necessarily a huge surprise. But here's the thing when you think about it, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are huge draws. They have this kind of huge cultural impact in a way. But what I think a lot of people are finding, even though they have this kind of huge footprint, it's not really resulting in anything kind of in them selling quite as much as people would like. There's not, they're having this impact, but it's mostly ridicule. They do something and they get this little pocket of praise from the Sussex stands and then they basically get everybody else rolling their eyes and complaining about it. So Harry and Meghan have gone from Harry being this kind of universally loved figure to being very divisive. People either love Harry or they hate Harry. There's no in between. Same with Megan. People either love her or they hate her. There's just no in between. And ergo, their star power goes 
down again and again and again. Because if you take somebody like Chris Pratt, a lot of people don't like Chris Pratt because he's a Christian and they don't like some of the things his wife posts, yada, yada, yada. But he still a, he has a huge cultural impact and people like him like, and oh, his divorce from Anna Ferris. So I'm actually not a huge fan because of his divorce from Anna Ferris. I'm just, anyways, but people either kind of like him or loathe him, but it's not that bad. There's still very much a general good impression of him. I'm trying to think of P oh, Will Smith. I don't know who loves Will Smith anymore, but he has earned the ire of a lot of people. So he's become this, from this universally loved figure to kind of this universally reviled figure. I mean, I'm sure there's some people who will still love him and stuff like that, but he's become this very divisive figure because of his slapping of Chris Rock that seemed completely unprovoked. And Harry and Meghan, I think, are kind of in the same camp. I mean, they kind of, you know, metaphorically slap the monarchy, they didn't actually slap anybody, but they've made themselves such a pariah to the royal family. I mean, they are in such a bad straits with them. They weren't even given a pre given a nice seat at the Jubilee. They were basically shucked to the back row next to Sarah Chateau. And no offense to Sarah Chateau, she is lovely, she's an artist, she always looks impeccable, she's always had led a very, very, you know, quiet life. She is Princess Margaret's daughter. So that is kind of down, down, down the line of succession there. And so Harry, I mean, Harry and Meghan, I mean, they really got kind of shafted in their seating. They were very much told publicly, internationally, no, you guys are now second, you guys are third tier basically. Beatrice and Eugenie are second tier. You're third tier now, very, very publicly. In fact, it's you know been reported that Harry and Meghan tried to shove Beatrice and Eugenie down the seats and we're told, no, the queen has determined that you sit there at seats like nine and 10 or something. You don't get to sit right next to the senior royals anymore. But when you look at this from Sunshine Sachs perspective too, not only is just that they turn Harry kind of into the turd, but his capital goes down almost every time he makes a public appearance. He, you know, made the speech at the UN to an empty room and kind of ridiculed the United States. And, you know, again, because Harry lives in the bubble of LA with Meghan, he has no clue how the rest of the country lives, how the rest of the country thinks. He immediately offended half the country because there's liberals and conservatives and they have different opinions oftentimes when it comes to abortion. And so he's him saying, you know, that, you know, basically we're taking away human rights and we're on the same platform at, you know, same, we're at the same level as Russia and Ukraine with this abortion decision immediately takes off half the country. I don't care where you stand on abortion. That's just the truth in this nation is that he immediately ticked off half the country and he became a joke like Greg Gutfeld, like basically everybody was making fun of him. And I don't know if he totally understands because he's in such this LA bubble, especially with Megan, which is very, very liberal, that he understands that what he's doing doesn't work and that he's kind of actually making really, really poor decisions in terms of what he's doing and how he's looking at people. And Sunshine Sacks, I feel like it's just feeding and feeding and feeding this and just encouraging them to do more and more and more because what Sunshine Sacks did as well, especially while Harry and Meghan were still in the monarchy, is constantly pushing these positive stories about how great Meghan is. And I'm sorry, but I wanna see action. I don't wanna hear somebody who it benefits them to say Megan's great, saying Megan's great again and again and again. I wanna know what her staff thinks. That is a real opinion. Her staff, what do they think of her? Cause that is a true perspective. If all of her friends tell us how great she is, that's fine. I mean, that those are her friends. That's what they're supposed to do. Whereas, you know, Catherine and William, we don't really hear a ton of people talking about Catherine's so great. Look how great she is. You know, she's such a great friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't hear that. But when I look at their staff, you know, Harry and Meghan has, have still have immense staff turnover. Rather than William, their, their staff members keep rotating. Yes, they go take another job, but then they come back. Jason Knapp, he was like, in the Cambridge sphere and then he kind of went over to the Sussex sphere a bit and then he went over to back to Catherine and William and then he left for a bit and now he's back again with the Earthshot Prize. So he just keeps coming back. Why? Because Catherine and William are good people to work for. You don't come back to people you hate to work for. That's just not how it works. But Megan, basically Harry and Megan, the tenure for them is like a year. When it came to their night nurses, they apparently went through several in a month. 
when after Archie was born. So that's not the best. This just doesn't look the best. And I'm sorry, but where there's smoke, there's fire. I saw a comment today going, well, you guys come, you know, talk about every rumor, but as soon as there's rumor about William, you say it's a lie. I was like, well, yeah, because it's kind of an obvious lie. They've threatened legal action. The son pulled it down. A lot of people have pulled down the initial story. This is about the story about Prince William having an affair. And it's like, there's never been one shred, one iota of evidence that this has ever, ever been the case. Whereas we have a long laundry list of things that Megan has either said or done that have been perceived by a lot of people as bad, negative, you know, people were terrified to, her staff members were terrified of her basically and her increasing demands and they were, you know, shaking. They were so scared to talk to her. That's just, I'm sorry, but that just doesn't sound good. So Sunshine Sachs has this uphill battle and they just have never been able to reverse course. And a huge part of it is that they just didn't understand the monarchy to begin with and neither did Megan. And they fed themselves with this ignorance about what institution they were actually in. And I feel like it's led Harry and Meghan to just ruin because they didn't understand the fundamental thing is that the monarchy is supported by the taxpayers. They are responsible to the taxpayers. They're not responsible to shareholders or something like that. They are responsible for people who have no right to say no to be t being taxed to support them. Ergo, they're held to a higher standard. And just constant PR bursts of going, how great are they? How great are they? How great are they? Doesn't work when your job is to basically be in front of the public and you know, kind of share aspects of your life, perform duties, selfless duties, duties where you don't get paid. Megan wanted to get paid for going anywhere and doing anything for the British monarchy. She wanted people to tabulate the crowds and go, look how many people she brought in. And what she didn't understand as well is, yeah, as the royal initially, you are, people are very, very interested in you. So you do draw, draw large crowds. Those crowds decrease over time, especially because as you get older, there's just less interest and the younger generation takes, it becomes more popular and more interesting. Kath, you know, Harry and Meghan at some point would have just been replaced by the Cambridge kids just by osmosis because the Cambridge kids would grow up, they would start dating, they would get a lot more attention rather than Harry and Meghan who are now a middle-aged couple with their own kids. And yeah, their kids would get some attention but not near the attention as the Cambridge kids get. And that is just part of the monarchy. That is just how monarchies work. The, it's just kind of, I mean, I'm sure it's very, very hard because you go from being in the spotlight to kind of being less, less important over time. And, and again, this generally works across the board. It's just not the Brits. And I'm sure that's hard to adjust, but Harry and Meghan, especially when it came to Mexit, did it exactly wrong. They made outrageous demands. They looked like they were trying to trample on Catherine's birthday. It was just one disastrous decision after another when it comes to them. And it was led, I think, a lot by Sunshine Sachs, who again, changed the golden goose to a giant turd. Well guys, let me know what you think of this video. This just like, the title just came to me. I was like, oh, I gotta film it. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.